Hello there and welcome to the series of videos that's going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at linear regression in the correlation chapter so we can answer questions from exercise 4b. So what is linear regression? Well linear regression is, take, is creating a line of best fit um, for a set of data and one of the best ways of creating a regression line here, this straight line here from these five coordinates here, is um, a least squares regression line. So that is effectively um, a way of mathematically creating a square through all of your points to the line. So one corner is your point, one corner meets the line, and then that creates a square. And it's the least area that is built um, when you create this line here. So this is what a least squares regression line is. Now you don't have to um, to know how to create this line or how the equation is found that used to be in the uh, used to be in the A level syllabus and now no longer is but what you need to know is that the least squares regression line um, creates a line of best fit through all of your coordinates and the way it does this is by minimizing the squared area um, from your coordinates to the line okay so that's what a least squares regression line is um, so it minimizes the sum of all the distances um, to the point as far as possible and it's generally a straight line, it's always a straight line in, in this module here certainly. Um, it, could be, it could be a quadratic curve um, when you get higher up in mathematics um, but for just, uh, just for A level it's going to be a straight line. Okay, and we need to be able to identify what the values A and B mean in the context of a question. So you don't need to be able to work out the line of best fit, but you need to be able to interpret what that line of best fit um, is and how it um, correlates to the question, how it links to the question. Okay, so uh, what we have here is a set of data from the large data set, uh, daily mean wind speed, uh, W that's in knots, and the daily maximum gust, which is G, that's in G knots, um, where records uh, for the first 15 days in Camborne in 2015 of May. Uh, plot these on a diagram, so we're going to get this sort of uh, shape here, and describe the correlation between the daily mean wind gust and the daily maximum wind gust. Well, here it looks like there's a strong positive correlation between the daily mean wind gusts and the um, daily mean wind speed. Okay, so strong positive correlation there. What else can it ask us? Uh, the line of best fit gives uh, 7.23 plus 1.8 W. Give an interpretation of what these two values mean for the regression lines. This is a classic... Uh, a level type question here they've given you the equation for the line of best fit and now you've got to um to give the um to give a context for these two values here so um the gradient that's going to be the value that's in front of w represents the change in y per change in x or in other words in context the daily mean wind speed increases by one knot the daily maximum wind gust will increase by 1.82 knots. If we were to draw our line of best fit in, and if we were to go along 1 on the wind, wind, mean wind speed, we would go 1.8 up on the maximum wind gust. So as the x-axis increases by 1, the y increases by 1.82, and then just use the um, expressions that you've got in your x-axis and y-axis. The 7.23, oh, it's just the gradient it wants us to find. Uh, justify the use of a linear regression line in this case. Um, because the, the data points form a straight line, there is strong positive correlation. It makes sense here to use a linear regression line. Right, so using this technique from the um, line of best fit and the regression line, if you know uh, a value of the independent variable from a bivariate data, it's possible using that line of best fit and, and going up from the x-axis to the line of best fit and across to be able to make a reasonable approximation for what your dependent variable will come out to be. Uh, just make sure though, however, we'll see an example where we've got one estimate that's outside of our range of data values and one value that's inside our range of data values 
obviously the one that's inside our range of data values is going to be more accurate. Okay, so let's have a little look at this question here. What we have are head circumferences uh, of babies and gestation periods. Okay, um, so we have a line of best fit that's uh, 8.91 plus 0.624. Okay, the question is used to estimate the head circumference of a baby born 39 weeks and a baby born after 30 weeks. Comment on the reliability of these estimates. Well, in this case here, because the 39-week-year-old baby is certainly within our range of data here from about 33 up to about 40, this estimate using the line of best fit here is going to be very reliable. Um, because it's inside our range of data values. The 30-week-year-old baby, however, is all the way over here, and it's not going to be very reliable, this line of best fit here. It may curve off, it may go downwards, it may carry on as a straight line, but because we don't have any data values around this region, it's difficult to know whether it would carry on, or go up a bit, or go down a bit. So it's outside the range of data, so it's less likely to be accurate. And the posh words that we give to these our interpolation, when it's inside our region of values, our region of uh, data points, and extrapolation, when it's extra, when it's outside of our data values. Okay, uh, a nurse wants to estimate the gestation period for a baby born with a head circumference of 31.6, uh, so just about probably, uh, just about outside our data value. Explain why the regression line may not be a suitable estimate. Um, the head circumference is the dependent variable, um, so it's very difficult to go from the dependent variable, which would be 31.6 here, and the head circumference value to go across and down, um, because generally what happens is the head circumference gets larger as the gestation period increases, so it's very difficult to, to go backwards. Uh, estimation should always be the independent variable to estimate the dependent variable, not the other way around. Okay. Right then, so it's your go to have a uh, practice on this question here. Uh, make sure you've got some graph paper because you're going to have to draw a scatter diagram with this one here. We'll just try and make it as accurate as possible. Right, pause the video and have a go at this one. Right then, well done for having a go at this question here. So an accountant monitors the number of items produced per month by a company together with the total production costs. The table shows this data. So here we've got number of items in the left-hand column, the deep independent variable, and the production costs, which depends upon the deep independent variable, which is how many items we produce. So part A is draw a scatter diagram to represent this information. So here's one I did earlier, so along the bottom here we have a number of items produced and at the top here we have production costs. Uh, the equation of the regression line is, let's put on that regression line, is 21.0 plus 0.98n. Uh, draw the regression line onto your diagram, good, done that. Um, interpret the meaning of the figures 21.0 and 0 0.98. <clears throat> well, 21.0 here is effectively, if we were to buy no items, or if we were to produce no items, we would have fixed costs of 21.0. That's uh, £21,000 um, in terms of production costs. So the fixed costs for this business is 21000 and then for the 0 0.98 figure here, let's just go back to the um, yeah, it's thousands. So for every thousand more products that we make, we're going to have £980 more production costs <coughs> per, per thousand items that we produce. So make sure you've... Uh, the reason I went back here to look at this, um, this piece of data back here is to just check the units that we're working with here. So it's thousands of items, so every 1,000 items we increase by, we're going to increase our production costs by 1,000 times 0 0.98, which is £980. The company expects to produce 74,000 items in June and 95,000 items in July. Comment on the suitability of the regression line to predict the production costs for these months. 
So for the 74,000, yeah, that's uh, pretty much slap bang in the middle of our um, of our set of data here. 95,000 is some way outside, so this is going to be less reliable, and this is going to be more reliable. And you can use the posh words here, interpolation, if it's inside the region of values, and extrapolation, if it's outside the region of values. Okay, so that's your answer for this question here then. So make sure you have a go at lots of other questions from exercise 4b. This is the end of the chapter, so make sure you um, you practice these questions here. They're easy marks if you know the correct terminology and the correct phrases that they're expecting you to use here. So have some practice and make sure you can do these uh, very well. Right, thanks very much for watching.